27 years as a founder and artistic director of the group theater, Lonnie has made a place, a secure place, that people can nurture their craft. Actors, directors, <coughs> producers, set designers, playwrights, young and old, whatever. Given them a place to work. Kept the doors open. <laughs> Celebrate with him, friends, relatives, past members of the group theater, to celebrate with him as we honor him by rededicating this playhouse in his name. I'm the executive director of Synthaxis Theatre Company, and we're also 27 years old, and we've been going strong. Um, I've known Lonnie for a long time. I've known the group theatre for a long time. We were colleagues in uh, an organization that joined with another organization. It was Professional Actors League, who joined with the Los Angeles League of Theatres and became Theatre Alliance. At that time, um, we didn't have much theatre in this town. When I came here in 43, there was no theater, just the equity workshops. And out of the equity workshops came Equity Waiver. And out of Equity Waiver came the 99 seat plan. And we've been working under that for all these years. And I've been very happy to be part of the bludgeoning and the, and the uh, expansion of theater, not only in Los Angeles, but in North Hollywood, as well as Lonnie has been part of that movement. And we have brought theater to North Hollywood and to the NoHo Arts District. And so I'm very happy to have been asked to be here and address a few words to an old colleague and to see you all and to say, uh, um, old Lang Syne. Thank you. I was so delighted to be asked to say some things about Lonnie. And when, when I came into this exquisite theater uh, about a half hour late, laid eyes on Lonnie for the first time in, in a couple of years, at least. I thought, my God, he looks the same. <laughs> well, everybody else is, is becoming decrepit, and he looks the same. 
Well, Lonnie, you still have everything that you always had. You know, Lonnie and I were, uh, I guess I know, I know Lonnie longer than even Salome. This place is filled with people who know Lonnie for a long time. Lonnie did a picture for me, uh, geez, it must be the six, early, late 60s? The Reavers by, by uh, William Falk, and he played the father, and he's, uh, uh, he played the father in the Reavers. Very uh, significant and important part because, and I cast it perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> because Lon the part needed a sense of kind of moral dignity and strength, you know. There are very few guys who can do that. Uh, uh, you know, Henry Fonda can do it, and, and Gregory Peck, those people who can play presidents or, or sec secretaries of state, they have a, sense, a certain kind of sense of moral uh, correctness and, and honesty and on honor. honor. And Lonnie has led an honorable life. 27 years of this theater. Uh, my God, uh, to have a theater name, it's not just a movie theater, it's a theater yeah. where real things go on. <laughs> <laughs> it, it seems to me uh, the most uh, glorious honor to, uh, to have such a thing named after, uh, such a place named after you. And I cannot tell you what pride it gives me to be present and to tell you that you deserve it as well as anybody I've ever seen. I love you. Mr. Chapman knows how to write fresh, humorous, and touching scenes. Richard Watts said that many years ago about Lonnie's first play that he wrote and directed in New York called The Buffalo Skinner. The moment-by-moment -moment authenticity of the people and the pattern suggests that Mr. Chapman, who has until now confined himself to acting, is not wasting his time tackling other trades, said Walter Kerr. What Mr. Chapman has given us is a poetic treatment of high quality with fine touches of humor. It's starting to sound like Lonnie, isn't it? <laughs> when not acting, Lonnie Chapman is writing plays that sing of the dreams and defiances of the lonely rebel against society. In his cry of the raindrop, the songs are literally present both to music and in lyrical speeches to the audience. As in his earlier play, The Buffalo Skinner, Mr. Chapman reveals flashes of imagination, freshness, and sensitive perception. He is a dramatist who possesses deep feeling and a brooding mind of his own, and he can write scenes that have an appealing air of sadly wistful humor. Richard Watts of The Post. And these things that Lonnie possesses, and these are just some of them, he has unselfishly shared with all of us all of these years. And uh, I know that I personally, but everybody here certainly thanks and loves you. I think I'll use this. I can get a little more intimate. Look at those two, God. <laughs> you know, when I first got into the actor's studio, uh, I found it not to be a very friendly place. I mean, I wasn't welcomed with open arms. But a guy came up, an Oklahoma fella, and he said, uh, I got a project I'm working on. You want to be in it? <laughs> and I said, sure. And uh, you know, it was logical that I would go with the Kassara group. With, you know, I'm a kid from Brooklyn. You'd think I would be there with Benny Gazzara and Tony Franciosa and, and that group. But I wound up with the Okies. <laughs> Red dirt country, you know? <laughs> anyway. Uh, we did a lot of stuff together, Lonnie and I, and uh, it was fun. In fact, I remember one project that Phelps Manning wrote uh, where we did an experiment, and uh, I think it was the first time Henry Fonda had ever been to the actor's studio. And Lee Strasberg was trying to impress him, and what we did didn't impress 
him. <laughs> Nor did it impress Lee Strasberg. So much so that I think Phelps Manning was banned from the studio. And I, was, and I don't think Lonnie showed up again for a year <laughs> because he was upset as we all of us were. And then when I got married, uh, it was a pretty small wedding. We went down to City Hall and Barbara, myself, Eleanor Z and Lonnie Chapman stood up for me. Well, anyway, I mean, Lonnie, 27 years in this place, it's about time <laughs> that they named it the Lonnie Chapman Theater. My God, I mean, here's a guy who is really, the things that motivated him to start with are the things that still motivate him. I mean, there's not a lot of people you can say that about. I mean, he still loves theater. He loves what he does. And we'd love to woo him back to the studio. I mean, we're t we've been talking about this at every meeting we have. Uh, Mark and I and, and, and the committee have been talking about how do we get Lonnie back involved at the studio? Because Lee Strasberg isn't here to scare you off anymore. <laughs> At any rate, I, 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 I'm so happy to be here today, and, uh, and as I say this, Mark said it, you know, there's no one more deserving to have his name above a theater, and this theater particularly, than Lonnie Chapman. Get up here and talk about Lonnie. I mean, I could, uh, you could just go on. I could talk longer than the old tail gunner here, you know, about <laughs> what I got. So uh, I think uh, I, did have, I did have one message from Cousin Plato. Uh, <laughs> and he said, he said to say, Barrymore, he said, Barrymore, I knew you'd make it, Barrymore. He said, Elder, actually, Elder, just not just name a theater after you, Elder, name the whole goddamn street after you. <laughs> My cousin Plato was sort of an inside joke. Plato Andros was an All-American football player, and he and Lonnie were on the track team together, and Plato was chewed back and spit and called him Barrymore. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, briefly, I think that kind of what sums up Lonnie for me, I would quote one of his lyrics. If you'll indulge me a bit, it goes like, Buddy, if you go for Buffalo in this territory, you got to be a man among men. <laughs> oh. I think that's pretty much, pretty much, uh, I think in the theater world, that pretty much sums up Lonnie. He's certainly a man among men and other persuasions. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, I've got an awful lot to, to thank Lonnie for, I mean, not the least of which is uh, the joys and ecstasies of meatball sandwiches and pool at Frank's Tavern in Fishkill, New York. I, I mean, before the, the group theater, Lonnie goes way back to New York in the Fishkill Cecilwood Theater. Uh, as a matter of fact, my first equity job, Lonnie gave me. And uh, actually, a few years later, uh, he cast me and uh, my future wife in a film, in a movie up there. If it hadn't been for Lonnie, uh, I wouldn't be married, you know. <laughs> but anyway, Lon Lonnie's touched a lot of lives here and we all love him and uh, I'll get off now after that. <laughs> So, Lonnie. <laughs> so, I'm a dean. Oh, I do want to correct one thing that Martin said. Lee Strasberg never frightened Lonnie. <laughs> not ever. More of that I shall not say, but that is true. I have loved Lonnie since I first saw him. I don't know, 40, 50 years ago. You weren't running. It was a play called Ladies in the Corridor. And then I met him. 
and it's extraordinary to meet someone who is so obviously true all the time with himself and with you, even when we were loaded. <laughs> <laughs> he was always true. What the card said to um, Lonnie and the chairman, <laughs> does everybody know who the chairman is? <laughs> it said simply, for you too are a clear and present blessing. Aww. I told the upstairs to our director here that I did not wish to speak, but since I'm here, there are, um, I think, two lines at the end of a poem by the exquisite poet Brendan Brooks. And it said it. What I believe Lonnie has always known. For we are each other's business. We are each other's harvest. We are each other's magnitude and bond. Mm -hmm. well, I didn't know that I was going to speak, but I will. Um, <laughs> hi, first. It's been a long time. Um, uh, by the time I got to the actor's studio, they were still nasty, but there were no Okies, so I came to the group repertory <laughs> theater, <laughs> where they were uh, more than welcoming. And I suppose I just want to say what I think most of us had to say, which is thank you. It's uh, meant everything. Janet Wood, and I am the only original member of the group repertory theater that never left. I, I just always stay. So, and I have some letters here from some people who could not be here today but wanted to say a few words, and I'll, I'll read them to you in a minute. But first of all, I have my own little Lonnie Chapman story. In the very beginning, we were a group of about 10 ragtag actors in a, in a little tiny theater in search of an artistic director. And Lonnie was an artistic director in search of a theater. So we had a perfect marriage going on. And Lonnie is not only a brilliant director, but he was also smart enough to cast all 10 of us in the first production. <laughs> So he adapted Schnitzler's La Ronde. And Round Dance, as it came to be known, was our first production and actually was a hit and it, it really put us on the map. So in Round Dance, I played the Little Miss, remember? And I was a little teenage vixen who was invited to a private room in a restaurant by the older gentleman. And I would eat my dessert with my fingers. Well, one night my partner, Don Furneaux, could, was sick. He couldn't perform. And so there was only one person to take his place. And so for one glorious performance, I got to play my little miss to Lonnie Chapman's older gentleman. <laughs> and it was magical. And it was a time that neither of us will ever forget. As a matter of fact, Lonnie, I saved you the dessert. <laughs> Here it is. Ready whip. <laughs> You'll get that later. Also, I want to really acknowledge Jerry Gardino because it was his idea to change the name of the theater to the Lonnie Chapman Theater. And without his passion, we all wouldn't be sitting here today. Since Round Dance, by the way, there's been 132 productions and precisely a gazillion projects. 
And it's all because of Lonnie and Ermadine. And now the letters. This is the first letter. I'm sorry to have to miss this wonderful occasion, but I'll be thinking of the event and wishing everyone attending a beautiful afternoon and opening night. May the whole day be an occasion to cherish and remember. God bless all of you. Wiley Dean Chapman. <laughs> to my friend Lonnie, how appropriate to rename the group repertory theater the Lonnie Chapman Theater. From the first time I saw you on the Fox Theater stage in Joplin, performing a piece that you had written about a young man going to jail, you have continued to be a dynamic force in the theater. Few in our profession have created a legacy worth duplicating, and you are such a one. Jerry and I send our love and congratulations, and we are sorry that we cannot be with you on this special night. We love you both. Dennis and Jerry Weaver. Dear Lonnie, when I began working in Los Angeles theater in the 60s, you were known as the most professional, the most grounded, the most knowledgeable in the real life of a working actor. And all of us looked up to you, and we still do. Every actor wants to have a theater named after you, after him. <laughs> Few deserve it, and you do, Richard Dreyfus. When I first came to LA and didn't know anybody, Lonnie Chapman took me under his wing. The group repertory theater was an oasis of family and creativity for me. After years of drifting and struggling, I got my first agent out of a workshop production at the group. Congratulations, Lonnie. We're all very proud of you. Sorry I can't be there. I'm working on two films right now. Love, Jennifer Tilly. The picture was Baby Doll. Lonnie was driving a truck to pick up Eli. Kazan challenged Lonnie to make a dull scene come to life. And Lonnie came in singing a song he made up about cut and cotton. And it was loud and clear. And the scene really picked up. Ask him to sing it for you. Loud and clear. <laughs> My best to you, Lonnie, and congratulations on all the good work you've done. God bless, Carl Malden. Dear Lonnie, I have such fond memories of working with you and doing The Boyfriend, my very first musical. My thoughts are with you on the special occasion. Imagine having a theater named after you. Congratulations. With warmest regards, Barbara Streisand. <laughs> Lonnie Chapman was virtually the first acting teacher I studied with in New York City. It was the theater studio of New York, and my memories of classes with Lonnie and my roommate, Bob Duval are filled with a sense of utmost appreciation for a grounding in acting that I will always cherish. Lonnie was the first person to give me a job at his Cecil Wood Theater in Fishkill, New York, doing The Diary of Anne Frank and Blue Denim with Lonnie as my father. And that's how I got my equity card. <laughs> It's gratifying and fitting to hear that he's having a theater named after him. He has done so much for actors in this 20th century. Congratulations to you, Lonnie, and to the Lonnie Chapman Theater, Dustin Hoffman. <laughs> Lonnie and Irma Dean Chapman are as much a part of the structure of the group repertory theater as every window and every door and every member that has ever passed through its doors. Without these two support beams, it would not stand. Do birds fly? Is the North Hollywood sky supposed to be blue? Do actors neck in the light booth? <laughs> Does Nora Mirbaum have a hat, shoes, and purse to match every outfit? <laughs> Is this Lonnie Chapman's group repertory theater? It's not really a question. The declaration must be only for those who pass through the first time, because Lonnie to myself and your GRT children, and anyone who has ever spent more than an hour inside the building, Lonnie Chapman's group repertory theater is truly a redundancy. 
Lana, your name is the Group Repertory Theater. So shall it be written, so it shall be done. Much love and many chocolate kisses. One of the core members, Lynn Rosenbright. And Sally Field also sent a message saying that she was very sorry she could not make it here today. She's in post-production with her film Beautiful, but congratulates Lonnie and wishes him all the best. And now I have one more story. In the spring of 1946, Lonnie, the track man, was running the mile in the Drake no, relays. No. You got it. <laughs> The year was 1946, but it was the Texas Relays, and uh, there were a bunch of us uh, that just got out of uh, duty in the World War II that were hard uh, rock uh, sports stars, and we would go to all the sporting events mostly to hooray the opposition. So we we went to the uh, to the Texas Relays that year, and we had a dandy miler named Jerry Thompson. And uh, so we were there, and they were running them out. And here is this Oki man, jumps out in the front, boy, and he's leading all the way to back behind him and everything. I'm thinking, my God, we're not going to get to hoorah on this guy. And go round, around, 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 around. And about 100 yards from the finish, while Jerry starts his kick. And this Oki looks behind him, and he sees him coming. And he gets desperate, and he's running, and he runs. And now we hoorah him, boy mercilessly, and Jerry Thompson won, and our man uh, from Oklahoma came in second. Now, for years and years and years, this man was only known to me in my memory as the Yogi without a kick. <laughs> and, and, and then, then in, in 1962, I got in the actor's studio, this guy comes up to me and said, listen, I'm doing a a project of East of Eden, and would you like to play a doctor in it? And I said, sure. So as I got to know this man and his wife, little by little, he was telling me stories and everything. One day I think, oh God, this is the guy. <laughs> <laughs> and so I told him, but, and he forgave me. <laughs> and we've known each other and been friends ever since. And I think that I don't know how many of you are aware, probably most of you, but the, there's a thing that people of my generation call a pure theater man. This is a man whose all of his abilities have been bundled to theater, stage, not movies, television, but theater. And he writes, acts, directs, produces, whatever. And they're passing away. The producers on Broadway now are Disney, and these, they're, not, they're corporations. They're not even people like, like, like Whitehead, and they're all going, American, everybody. So that you have chosen, you have chosen to present this thing, this naming of this theater, to one of the few remaining theater, pure theater men in this country. Now, maybe in a lot of other countries, they live on. But good Lord, let's hang on to this man as long as we can. <laughs> Susan Jackley, the Deputy City Council and President John Ferraro's office. He has something here to present. It gives me a great honor to read this for Lonnie, who created a place um, where creative spirit could really be nurtured and people could build ensemble, and that was really important. The City of Los Angeles, resolution for Lonnie Chapman. Whereas Lonnie Chapman is a remarkable champion of theater and entertainment, for more than a quarter of a century, Lonnie Chapman has made invaluable artistic contributions to Los Angeles and the world as artistic director of the Group Repertory Theater, 
Appropriately, both the company and its home are now to be known as Lonnie Chapman's Group Repertory Theater in recognition of his magnificent work and profoundly visionary leadership. And whereas Lonnie Chapman's career started in New York, and it mentions some of that, whereas Lonnie Chapman has appeared in over 30 films, including East of Eden, The Birds, Baby Doll, and has been in more than 300 television shows, whereas Lonnie Chapman has dedicated himself to bringing to life the works of the great playwrights of the world, whereas Lonnie Chapman has provided many community service projects to bring the gift of theater to children, senior citizens, and artistically underserved parts of the community, whereas the Group Repertory Theater, now the Lonnie Chapman's Group Repertory Theater, is celebrating its 25th season and Lonnie Chapman has been artistic director the entire time. The Group Repertory was one of the pioneer theater communities in the city and was of particularly crucial significance in the Valley. Today it remains renowned as an outstanding theatrical company known for its outstanding productions and community service and its special leader, Lonnie Chapman. Now therefore be it resolved that Los Angeles City Council hereby salutes Lonnie Chapman and the Lonnie Chapman Group Repertory Theater both of whom are certain to provide awe-inspiring drama and wondrous delight well into the next millennium. Through his steadfast ways and caring deeds, Lonnie Chapman has made Los Angeles a better place in which to live. Signed by Joel Wax and other members of the City Council. Birkenheim. I'm the project manager for the North Hollywood Redevelopment Project area. And I had a different experience in meeting Lonnie and working with him because my issue was always buildings. And the first building that I worked on in North Hollywood was the creation of a senior citizen housing project at the corner of Lancashire and Vineland Avenue. <laughs> So part of the first thing I needed to do was move those people that were on that site. <laughs> Group Repertory Theater. And Lonnie went out looking with other people on where possibly could Group Repertory Theater relocate. And he found this building. And I said, are you sure this is where you really want to go? Yes, this is going to be the perfect building for me. And I saw an empty building. But Lonnie knew. He could see. He could see the theater, he could see the acting company, and we started working towards relocation. And through a lot of work and dedication on his part and the company's part, Group Repertory Theater opened again um, and continued to be a very vibrant beacon for theater and people within North Hollywood. And I think that the Group Repertory Theater was so strong that it attracted other theaters to North Hollywood and really became the start of the NoHo Arts District and gave them a way to know that small theater can survive no matter what building it is in, no matter what the surrounding area it is, as long as you had a strong product and you really cared about the work that you were doing. So I am thrilled to be here on behalf of the Community Development Agency and behalf of City Council and Councilman Joel Wax to um, say to Lonnie Chapman um, Group Repertory Theater that the city of Los Angeles proudly celebrates the storied accomplishment of Group Repertory Theater, which after 27 remarkable seasons is being renamed the Lonnie Chapman Group Repertory Theater in honor of the amazing person who has been the company's artistic director throughout all those years. This theater has been an amazing cultural presence and landmark for the San Fernando Valley and for the entire Los Angeles region transfixing and delighting countless audiences while serving as a marvelous home to a grand array of theatrical talent. The city hereby praises all the people, including playwrights, actors, directors, craftspeople, artists, staff, benefactors, and audiences who make the Lonnie Chapman Group Repertory Theater a tremendous, rewarding experience and a huge success. Through its many extraordinary productions and efforts in support of the community, the Lonnie Chapman Group Repertory Theater makes Los Angeles a better place in which to live. Presented by Joel Wax, Los Angeles City Council Member, 2nd District. Thank you. Mr. Chapman, it's definitely obvious how many lives you've touched. On behalf of the Assembly Member, we'd like to recognize Lonnie Chapman 
for his outstanding leadership and community service to the GRT and of course to us all. Thank you. here for almost 22 years and you know the old cliche behind every successful man stands a successful woman right I'm speaking now on behalf of all the women in the world <laughs> and as a past member of the women's committee from LA City and County on the status of women this comes from the office of Joel Wax, council member, second district, and it is a gift of appreciation hereby presented to Irma Dean Chuck. <laughs> original. She is absolutely an original. She does not stand behind anybody. <laughs> I know that every single one of you feel that bonding that these two people have created in a world and in a life that really goes so fast. And we do owe it to Jerry because it was his vision and he just kept going, going, going. He says, we are going to rename this theater and that's it. <laughs> so let me just read you a few sentences so we can all get on. The city of Los Angeles thanks Irma Dean Chapman for her tremendous dedication and exemplary tenure as the general manager of the group repertory theater now to be known as Lonnie Chapman's Group Repertory Theater. Irma Dean Chapman has been an invaluable part of a successful theater organization. Irma Dean Chapman has been an exceptional inspiration and guiding force for the extraordinary endeavor, thereby making the city of Los Angeles a better place in which to live. And she has also been a den mother, a mother confessor, I remember her lying on the steps when we moved in here, lying with her whole body painting the steps. Ermadine is an original, and thank God. <laughs> Jerry, it would never would have happened in the first place. It's hard to conceive that this is happening. You know, uh, I have to say that the actors are the ones who are responsible for this theater's existence and it lasts as long as it has. And when the actors, all of us, began to work on getting this place ready, getting it open, we continue to have upstairs, we have our workouts and exercises and improvisations and etc. But it took us a solid year to get the place ready. And it was the actors who really got it done. Uh, 
I first hitchhiked to New York with Dennis Weaver and I from Norman, Oklahoma. I was there for about three weeks and I got a standing room only ticket for Streetcar Named Desire, the original production. And, and that's when the theater, the idea of theater hit me to, uh, it, it was just, it was just, I, I'd always thought about acting in relation to movies. Growing up, you know, you, you'd see movies, you never saw many stage plays except at school. But uh, I realized this, what, what was in the theater, and it was this. So when Marlon Brando, at the end of the play, says, Stella! <laughs> <laughs> what was happening with, at the moment with the audience, that's theater. Now, when Marlon Brando did the same thing on the, in the film, six months later, the audience enjoyed that moment. And that's when I realized, when I saw that, that I, I just couldn't stay away from the theater. It's my second love. You know who my first love is. And then we're catching up with New York off Broadway. And it's the actors that were the willingness to, to take part in this kind of theater, which is, uh, which I have to give all the credit to the actors because I love them and I, I hate, I, 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 I just, to be a part of, of actors is something that is, uh, that is something that, find the right words for what, what I feel about actors. I guess that's what I mean, there's nothing else I got to say. Right? <laughs>